God bless you. Happy Wednesday. I'm here with Miss Kelly Marie from Abba's Ministry. How are you? Oh my gosh, you're muted. Let me unmute you. Go. Oh, unmute <laughs> our mics before we go live. We're live, obviously. Hello. Yeah, no, I am doing super. I am. I'm telling you what. I just have to say, every time I go through any type of adversity. I have so much joy. <laughs> I have so much joy that I would without it. And it absolutely is amazing. So I'm doing incredible. Amen. We were just in Waco, Texas. I'm actually going to share this broadcast on my Twitter uh, right now. But we were just in Waco, Texas. And that was such an incredible conference with Pastor Ramiro Pena, Lance Walnow, Chuck Pierce, Arthur Pulowski. We got to spend some time meet in person, and that was so lovely. I had such a great time uh, with you. And it, on this weekend, it was it was like it was incredible what the Lord did, and just moved in the teaching and the the presence of the Lord. And it was just really, really like an amazing time. So I'm glad you came out. Thank you for coming out to support and be there for me. You know what? It was it was really beautiful, and I was so blessed to support this season in your life where the Lord is really taking you and into new territory where you are, you have been blessed. And, you know, it's like you are stepping into the full-time ministry that he's mantled you and marked you to walk in to serve the body of Christ. And so I was really honored and so blessed to celebrate you, Anna, and to be there. And I was even more blessed too with the message that Chuck Pierce released yes. and Lance Wallnow. It was so powerful. It was affirming. It was also confirming concerning the Liberty Bell. I noticed when Lance spoke about the Liberty Bell uh -huh. and, and also what Chuck Pierce spoke. I, I, I told my tribe the other day, I said, you know, it was really powerful when he said it's so important to go before the Lord in this season to receive battle strategy mm -hmm. and what we are stepping into and what sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. And he said this to pray and ask the Lord, what is the land and the territory that I am taking, that I am possessing, that I am occupying and literally taking dominion in that land to advance your kingdom. So you guys, it was powerful and I was ministered to, I mean, I was so thankful to the Lord for those messages from both of those uh, men of God. It was powerful, Anna. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, on Pastor Ramiro Pena's church website that you can watch it there. But also, you know, the Lord allowed me to share my testimony up there. But then after that, I was ordained. I was ordained a minister of the gospel. It was really special where they prophesied over me and prayed over me. And normally... A lot of women don't get ordained in ministry. There's a lot of male pastors who feel uncomfortable doing it, whatever religious spirit they're operating in. But praise God, these, these men of God were just wonderful. And it would just remind me of Paul and Timothy in the Bible, where Paul and church laid hands on Timothy and prayed over him, prophesied over him, and just released him into ministry according to the Holy Spirit and his will. So that was really incredible. I'm going to have a video up probably tomorrow for you guys to check it out. But today... I'm excited on Warrior Wednesdays. We're going to be talking about persecution, from persecution to promotion. We're going to talk a little bit about some of our testimony that we've been through. We've been through, been through a decent amount of persecution um, and lies and slander, and even when I became a Christian especially. And then from there, we're going to talk about scripture. We're going to talk about how we are to handle persecution as a Christian, to be fully equipped for the last great battle we are about to enter in, which many have noticed we're basically in already, this great last spiritual battle we're in before the Lord returns. Absolutely. You know what? It's it's so important. And here's here's the thing, everybody, that you know, when you're led by the Holy Spirit in mentoring or discipling, the Lord will have you walk through situations that are actually training ground. So we, every time we're, you know, we're led by the spirit, he allows a situation to happen to train us and to equip us and then to release those tools and that counsel and that wisdom to 
his sons and daughters. And that's what's most important. And so even when I came to really just support and celebrate Anna and, and, you know, when I was, I was blessed by that. I say it's, I call it Abba's arsenal in my, <laughs> in my hands, you know, to, to, you know, he trains our hands for war, but I went through a situation where the Lord began to speak and I was already discerning this, this heaviness and this persecution. And it was absolutely amazing how the Lord was preparing my spirit to handle what was about to happen when I came home. And so this is the reason why the Lord said, Kelly, in the midst of where you're being persecuted, where your name is being called out, you're publicly being slandered. And I wasn't offended, but I realized that the father said, listen, I want you to speak on this because my sons and daughters have to be prepared to know how to handle these tactics of the enemy when I am seasoning them and I am calling them to step out to take new territory or new ground to advance my kingdom. They need to be ready, be prepared in and out of season. There's a scripture and I bet you JP will know that scripture where God says we need to be prepared in and out of season for these tactics of the enemy, that spiritual warfare to know how to handle it. So that is also number one for this broadcast tonight. When we talk about core values of a warrior, we talk about the heart and the character of the warrior. You have to know how to deal with persecution. Why is that persecution happening in your life? And what is the harvest that is going to be produced through that persecution that is going to glorify the Lord and absolutely empower you and strengthen you in serving the body and edifying and equipping the body of Christ? Amen. And let's jump into a Bible verse that we're all very familiar with, which is in Matthew chapter five, the Sermon on the Mount. It's going to be verse 11. I'm going to pull it up right now. And then we'll talk about the reason why we're persecuted. Number one, number two, to rejoice in it, you know, how we react to it and what it really means and why the Lord allows it. Uh, let me share my screen. We'll start with the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter five. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. For my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this verse was actually my lifeline, Mar uh, Kelly Marie, when I just stepped out to be a Christian. You know, I became, I was realized I'm a conservative. I endorsed President Trump for, you know, presidency in 20. 16 before the election dealt with heavy persecution because I came out of the poker world and I came out of the survivor world, had a lot of fans on both sides. And all of a sudden they turned on me because I was a Trump supporter. I was the only one that supported him from the reality television world and media backlash and fake news and lies and slander. But then six months later, I came out as a Christian and it was even more of an attack. It was even heavier. And the, and the persecution, it was, it was horrible. I mean, some of the biggest shows on poker and the biggest shows on Survivor, the podcast, you know, with hundreds of thousands of followers, they would just lie about me and slander me every single week, call me all types of names, say all types of evil against me. They would say things like, oh, Anna, you know, she's, you know, she, she's a whore. She's a slut. She's a this, she's a that. And all these nasty things that are just not true. I've never even kissed anyone on Survivor. Meanwhile, I've been to all these parties with, with people from reality television, and all they do is they sleep with one another. They drink, they sleep, they do drugs, they're married, they, they don't care. I, I, I actually stopped going to them because it was so disgusting. I never even kissed anyone, never even touched anyone, and they're lying about me on their podcasts. Found out that one of these girls is, is, is a, um, it was a Satanist. On her profile, it's a Satanist on her Twitter account. And I thought, oh, wow. And I was just saved. I was just saved. So I've never experienced having that much 
people hate me, first of all, ever, honest, and all at once with all these people that were my friends. And so when I met one Christian friend during that time, thank God the Lord brought at least one because she told me about this verse. She said, blessed are you. You should rejoice. I'm hysterically crying on the phone. And she's telling me, blessed are you, child. Blessed are you for, for when they revile you and persecute and say all kinds of evil against you. Be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. So I started telling myself, you know what? Every time they say something nasty or negative, that's a treasure in heaven. There's a reward in heaven. I don't see it now. One day I will. And so I found myself hanging on this verse and thinking to myself, I'm going to rejoice. And I remember thinking, I can't wait to see what negative comments they have about me today. Like I, Cal, I would be excited to check my Instagram and my Twitter and see what they're saying about me. It came to a point where I was, I was really rejoicing in it. And I almost like unhealthily was like looking for negativity. But I want to say this as well, is that the Lord allowed me to go through it because it made me bolder. He brought that lioness out of my spirit. I became bold. I used to be very, very timid. I was very shy. I would have never thought I would have had a YouTube channel ever. And here I was forced into being, you know, going through the fire, going through the crucible. It was so necessary. And I'm so grateful to the Lord for it because it really made me bolder, stronger, and on my feet, able to stand and proclaim the good news of the gospel with full faith, knowing that it doesn't matter if they attack me. The reason why they are, it's because they hate him. It's not me they hate. It's him who lives inside me that they hate. Absolutely. And you know what? It is so important for you to share your journey, everything you went through because you chose Christ, because you chose the heart of God. And, and it's, you know, everybody here that's watching, excuse me, if I start coughing, it's because I have a little bit of a cold, but I'm getting through it. But Everybody that's watching, whether you're an atheist, whatever journey, wherever you are in your journey, it's important to know that anytime you stand up for the truth, and I've always said truth has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ. Anytime you stand up for the truth, you will experience persecution. And so for those of you here, you know, it's important to understand that we want to equip you because I went through it in my journey when I wasn't strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I would be hurt. I had suffered heavy depression. I would weep uncontrollably because I didn't understand how I would people could say the worst things to me. I was called when I stepped out in ministry. Let me tell you guys something. I was called a cunt. I was called a false prophet. Listen, we're going to be real. We're not holding nothing back. Anna was called a whore. There, These are the things that come out of filth and unrighteousness that come out of the, the very mouth of Satan himself. And he uses wounded people to do it. And so I was called so many names. The first time I stepped out, Anna, in full-time ministry, I was, I was literally persecuted by men and women that said women are not to preach the gospel. I mean, they came at me and I didn't even, you know, I, I wasn't even moved by it. But at the time, there were times when, you know, when you stand up and you say, how can so many people, you know, speak such lies? And, and one of the worst things is when you're so misunderstood. When somebody doesn't understand your heart, your, your personality, anything like that, they automatically want to speak criticism and judgment. And when you step out on the front line, anytime you step out on the front line, the persecution that's going to come is criticism and judgment. And I felt that the first thing I wanted to do, um, and, and if you feel, if you feel we're just to share different experiences that we went through, Go for it. be led by the spirit. But I felt that I wanted to give the definition of persecution mm. and because there's several different ways that you can be persecuted. And the definition means hostility and ill treatment 
especially because of race or political or religious beliefs. So it's showing you the areas. So whenever you rise up in righteousness in the political arena or in, in, in the religious arena, this is where the enemy is going to come after you. He's going to want to attack your heart, your identity, your personal life, your family, everything he can when you say yes to your calling, when you say yes to your destiny in Christ. He is going to do it. And so it means oppression, victimization. It means discrimination, punishment, torture, tyranny. One of the biggest ones is harassment, badgering, bullying. And get this, Anna, this is something. Another word for persecution is molestation spiritually molested, spiritually raped. There's a lot of people. I love that you brought up before that it's the, the enemy will use wounded people to wound others. And this is not just talking about the world that is wounded and in pain and in suffering and in a prison that they can't even see themselves in. Yeah. They, they don't even know they're in a prison. I actually want to say this really quickly. I had a vision. I was with a, a, a girlfriend of mine, a sister in Christ. I was praying for her. She asked me to pray for her family. And she has a Hindu background. She's the only one saved in her family. And she dealt with a lot of persecution. Her father disowned her. I mean, a lot of persecution. The Lord told her to let go of her family. And she let go of them for two years. And they came around. The Lord said that your father will give you his blessing for ministry. Because she was she's a full-time minister. And um, sure enough, the, the Lord made it all happen. But listen, I was praying for her family. And um, I saw this. And this is, there's a... JP, can you find the scripture verse where it says that uh, men sit in darkness in, in the prison, in a prison? There's a lot of verses about, you know, men in darkness and, you know, set the captives free, Isaiah 61. But there's a verse where it talks about men are in darkness and they sit in a prison because I, I prayed for her and instantly I saw it was pitch darkness and I saw this prison. I saw a prison and I saw her family and they were so... They were they were hopeless and they were holding on to the to the to the to the prison rails and they were shaking it and then they were in pitch darkness, but I saw them and they didn't know how to get out. They had no idea that they were even in a prison. They were just looking straight and they didn't know how to get out. And so we prayed for them. And so that, that verse is so real because that's where we are in a prison where we don't know the Lord. But I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even talking about the world right now. Let's talk about Christians, people that profess the faith, people that they say they follow Jesus, right? That are full of the Holy Spirit. There are so many people that are hurt that don't some either one. They don't let the Lord deal with the pain because it hurts too bad to touch it or they're in denial that they even have any issues that they need the Lord to deliver them from or healing in any certain area, whether it be a marriage or a pain or forgiveness or, you know, listen, even Jesus, who was perfect, went through a lot of persecution as we as we know. He was nailed to a cross. He went through a lot of pain, but he kept but he was still known as like the most faithful, most most joyful man that ever lived because he knew the truth and the truth does set you free. And so when you realize that people hurt you because they're hurt, it's not a reflection of you. Sometimes it is you. Sometimes you need to own it and say, oops, I made a mistake. But if you're being hated and persecuted and reviled because of his name's sake, amen, this is a blessing. It proves it's supposed to build your faith, right? It builds perseverance. It builds hope. It builds character. Uh, thank you. This is the verse, JP. You are the best. Thank you. Isaiah 49, 9. I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom. And to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in green pastures and on hills that were previously bare. That's that's one of them. There's another one where, where they sit in darkness and they're in prisons. That's also one. But anyway, um, but but to, to end that point, we have to realize where we're wounded. And we have to ask the Lord to use the oil of just the oil of myrrh, the oil of gladness, right? That the balm of Gilead to clean those wounds. The Lord wants to clean those wounds. He wants to stitch it up. He wants to make you whole because the enemy knows our wounds. He knows what we are dealing with. He knows 
the pain, the suffering you've been through in the past. Familiar spirits are very familiar with what you've been through. And he'll use other people to keep stabbing at that wound. And he'll use you to try to stab at other people. And so hurt Christians are hurting other Christians and they're wounded. And all of a sudden the whole army's wounded. They're sitting down. They're stagnant. They need healing. They need deliverance and they need to love one another. And that's why we are to read the word every day, fill our spirit with the word love and truth so we can minister onto one another, not from pain, but from love. Amen. Yes, Anna, absolutely. And as you were speaking, yes. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to read that? I'm sorry. Yeah, Isaiah 42, seven. Thank you, JP, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. It's, it's so amazing because in the vision I saw people sitting, but I also, I also saw people standing and they were holding the rails of that prison in darkness and just, they just kept doing this and they didn't know how to get out. But the Lord has sent a Messiah who can set the captives free. Amen. Absolutely. So one of the things the Lord was saying to me to speak on right now is there's nothing more painful than when in the body of Christ, you are going through persecution with those who are supposed to represent the heart of Christ as leaders in the body, those who are to shepherd, those who are to to serve the body, to build up the body and, and to edify the body of Christ. And so one of the visions that the Lord showed me, and this was probably about a, a month or so ago, I was going through intercession with an awesome man of God. And immediately the Lord took me into a really serious vision. There were leaders that were standing in a field and there was a serpent. This is what was going on. There was a serpent that was literally slithering on the ground and literally slithered behind their back. And when the snake slithered behind their back, it turned into a like a spine. Like it literally the snake went up the back of these leaders. And what happened was it caused these leaders to stand up, like to sit, sit, stand straight up. But what they what these leaders thought was that they were walking upright, but it was actually a serpent of pride. And oh. this is what the Lord showed me. He showed me Moses with the staff. And then he showed me how when Moses laid down the staff, it turned into a serpent. Right. But it devoured the other serpent from the Egyptian sorcerers when they had their staff and it turned into a snake. And what the Lord was showing me was the deception of the enemy where there are wounded leaders in the body and they literally do not discern this serpent called pride that is literally causing them to be postured upright, but it is pride. It is not righteousness. And so what happens is they are called a stiff necked people. God speaks about the stiff neck people. And if you look at a stiff, a stiff neck can't turn. It cannot turn. And the Lord spoke to Ezekiel and told Ezekiel to go to the people. He said, and to, and to speak my word to a stiff neck people. And he said, if they didn't receive me, they're not going to receive you. But the Lord was showing me that the biggest assignment of the enemy that we have to partner with the Holy Spirit in intercession so that they will be set free from that prison called pride. Mm. Because I'm telling you, we saw this and in this vision where we, I, the Lord showed me these serpents going right up behind the back and disguising itself as a backbone. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Self-righteousness, it also has a root of pride. So when you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I couldn't do any wrong. And this is, it, first of all, that's pride, but it's also self-righteousness. And there's a lot of fake Christians out there that think they're operating in the Lord, but it's self-righteousness and pride. And the root of self-righteousness is pride. That's, that, that's, that's an incredible vision. That's an incredible oh, vision. It's dangerous. At least to it's, all sorts of people. It's very dangerous. And, and to finish this vision is, I mean, there's such a powerful word from the Holy Spirit in this. So immediately 
when I saw these serpents slithering up behind the back, so it was happening behind their back. They didn't see it. They didn't discern it because wounds can be blind spots to not allow you to see the work of the enemy that's happening in your soul. And so what happened was I saw the snakes. It was very, I mean, I cringe when I saw the snake turn into a, a spine, like disguising itself as a strong backbone when it was absolutely the spirit of pride. And then the Lord had me and this other man in the spiritual realm through intercession reach our hand in their back and rip out the serpent. I mean, literally we grabbed it. And when we pulled it, it literally, the snake came out. And then of course the Lord, you know, crushed the serpent. But that's what we're facing right now as well on the front lines is these leaders that are not discerning where they're imprisoned with what you said, Anna, self-righteousness, denying their own woundedness, not being vulnerable and transparent so the spirit of God can really do a great work in them so that they can be so impactful that they can really impact the body of Christ in a beautiful way to glorify the Lord. So that's well, you know, that that's that's amazing. Two things. Number one, it's not just leaders, it's also the church itself, right? Yep. Christians itself. Yes. Here's what here's the other thing that's amazing. I recommended Rick Joyner's book, The Final Quest. What's awesome, Kel, is that Rick Joyner had a very similar vision that you what? had. And he this was his vision. He saw the hordes of hell, he saw the enemy's army and a lot of demonic spirits were not just even sitting on atheists. They were actually using Christians. There were demons lodged on them, right? And then he also saw God's army. He saw a lot of them wounded, a lot of them missing the full armor of God. And he noticed even the ones that were, were fully equipped and had the full armor on, right? We, we don't have an armor behind us, right? We don't have a back plate because the Lord is our rear guard. And he said, he saw at the mountain of God, he saw that the, the Christians that weren't paying attention, that were attacked from the back. The reason why the angel of the Lord showed him, he said, the reason why is because they've stepped out in pride in battle in some areas and they didn't have their back protected. And the back, the reason why is because they lacked humility, humility. He said, wow. He explained, you have to, it's such an incredible book. I highly recommend Rick Joyner's Final Quest. All three books are dreams and visions. It is amazing revelation. It's all biblical. It's just, it's such a beautiful vision of everything the word talks about. Very similar to your vision. And he, it, it rocked me. And this is what, this is what the Lord told him. The Lord said, at any level, whether you're a baby Christian or you've been with the, the Lord for a long time, even if you're mature and been with him for decades and decades, anyone can fall. Anyone can fall. Don't Absolutely. put anyone on a pedestal, right? And, and he said the reason why they do, especially in the top, you have a lot of power, a lot of authority the Lord has given you spiritually, right? Because it's not ours, it's the Holy Spirit. He said a lot of a lot of leaders a lot of people in the church they fall into pride and self-righteousness they lose the mantle of humility and they're open to attacks from the back and they can fall and the lord doesn't want us to fall he wants us to keep going higher 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 jane said she's reading it now i got so many of your emails saying how much you love that book i'm going to write it out for those that um have, haven't heard of it but his vision was exactly your vision in that their rear guard was open. They were open to attack. They were open for the serpent to go down up their back because they weren't paying attention. They were wow. walking in pride without covering their back in humility. Wow. I, I honestly, I remember years ago hearing about the final quest, but not actually taking, you know, reading that entire book. So it's really humbling to know that, you know, the Lord is making it very clear. He's bringing it to the forefront now. He's bringing it to the forefront because, and I feel the fire of the Holy Spirit. So for those of you that may say, what is Kelly saying? If you're not walking with Christ, it is, it is, Jesus is an all consuming fire. And when we talk about the fire of the Holy Spirit, it is literally tangibly the, the presence of God that burns up impurities, iniquities, anything that is, is, is literally uh, pulling you away. 
from a covenant, an intimate covenant with Christ, any, any assignment or tactic of the enemy, it is the fire of God that is released to consume it. And so, uh, and, and one of the things the Lord says is where there is a dry place, fires start. Fires start in a dry and parched area. So this is what I hear, Anna, from the Lord right now, is that we are to stand together as warrior women, and we are to decree the fire whew, of the Holy Spirit to come upon the backs of God's people, where they do not see, where they're open for the attack of the enemy, that we are to call forth the rear guard to decree that, because the, Jesus told me this, he said, Kelly, in this season, tell my people, yes, the enemy's going to rear his head, but I will rise up as your rear guard and protect you. And so that is what I feel we need to do right now. For those of you that are here now and on the replay, we are going to decree that your redeemer, Christ Jesus, he will be your rear guard. He will rise up and to protect your back, meaning what you cannot see, what you are not able to see or discern, that the Lord is going to come upon you and he is going to arm you, protect you and make these things known to you that you are not able to see or hear in the spirit, meaning God is going to bring clear reception to expose any deception. Mm. Why don't you pray for us right now? I'll jump in. Okay. Holy Spirit, right now, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that Jesus, you are our refuge. You're our rock. You are our fortress. You fortify us in the Father. You protect us in your truth. And we thank you right now, Lord, that you release the fire of your Holy Spirit to consume any assignment of the enemy, any tactic, device, or scheme of the enemy that wants to derail your sons and daughters concerning their destiny. God, any area where the enemy wants to slither in as a snake called pride, Lord, I thank you that you're going to pour out your spirit and you're going to minister to sons and daughters to recognize any blind spots where there are wounds. There are tender places where they were bruised by the enemy and the enemy wants to block those areas that you want to heal and you want to literally weaponize them to edify and strengthen the body of Christ. So Lord, we decree right now the fire of your Holy Spirit is released over your sons and daughters to burn up all impurity, all iniquity, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you begin to move and burn up all these tactics, devices of the enemy. But I thank you for exposing all deception that disguises itself as truth. Right now, all deception, Lord, we call forth right now the outpouring of your Holy Spirit that will expose the deception of the enemy that is a hidden snake in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that where it's disguising itself as the spirit of truth, you are going to burn it up and you are going to train and weaponize your sons and daughters in this moment, in this season of their life. They will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might as you begin to reveal these areas where the enemy is trying to hide and linger in their house. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to read another scripture, Kel, that you wanted to go through. And it's such a great chapter. Actually, 2 Timothy chapter 3 in 2018 is the one that really lunged me into completely surrendering un un under God. Completely, because this 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 chapter huh, is very meaningful to me. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter three: perilous times and perilous men. Know that. And by the way, I love the NASB version. Actually, you know what? Let me let me actually get the NASB version. That's my favorite with this chapter. Yes, that's the one the Lord was leading me to after Matthew five ten through twelve. I was so thankful that He was showing me this. Praise God. Praise God. 
right? These are the days that we're in. I mean, this is, this is, this is so prophetic. This is so prophetic of what Paul wrote. And this is the times we're living in second Timothy chapter three, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come for men will be lovers of self, right? Selfish lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips without self-control, right? Because the spirit of the Lord is self-control. Without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness. So this is even talking about Christians too, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. The Lord says, avoid such men as these. And this is what broke me when I was reading this verse. For among them are those who enter into households. These men go into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This chapter really resonated with me when I was you know, looking to God and I was saved, but I didn't, I wasn't fully surrendered. And the Lord was dealing with me because I was asking, do I stay with this person? I'm trying to evangelize to him. The Lord said, no, avoid such men as these, because those were all characteristics that he unfortunately had. And, um, amen. What do you want to say about this verse, Cal? Well, you know, I too, and, and it's very important, right? That we share these experiences with everybody that is learning and growing and developing in their relationship with Christ, right? And so in my own journey, Anna, I went through that because again, as a young woman, I wanted to be married. I did not want to step out in full-time ministry without my husband, but even then, so I made mistakes. God had to, he had to show me where he had to you know, have boundaries. Like he talked about guardrails. There are those who minister about guardrails. Those guardrails are there not to punish you, but protect you so that there's not a casualty that, you know, that you don't uh, get destroyed by the enemy. And so I had to do, I had to learn that as well, where I was vulnerable, but God used even my choices, right? My own choices, wanting to uh, you know, connect with uh, men and 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 see if I could develop a relationship that would lead to you know a covenant and and go forth in ministry. And God had to use different moments in my life to open me up and show me the woundedness in my soul, so that He could heal it and protect me from making these type of mistakes. So. We all go through these areas where God says, I'm going to allow you to move in that direction. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that choice that you're stepping out to make without wisdom. And I'm going to use that moment. So when you go in this direction, that's not the right direction. What I'm going to do as a loving father is I'm going to train you in that area. I'm going to reveal those wounds. And what I'm going to do is this is where I'm going to make you into a warrior. But I have to. So so what the Lord is saying even now, Anna, is we have free will, right? We have free will to make choices. But those choices that we make, God will use it to say, I'm going to use that to shape and mold you on the potter's will. I'm going to take that and say, I'm going to use that choice that was not a good choice to open up your soul and to begin to take you through a healing and restoration process in the areas that you are blinded by woundedness. And so I went through that, Anna. Amen. And this is why I love that Rick Joyner really talks about this in his book, because, you know, the Lord said that the world is going to know that we are his disciples when we love one another. And yeah. there, there are so many people, and I've, I've noticed it even in the Christian world. I've noticed it where when someone is down, all the other ministries and Christians, they jump on them and they attack them and they spear them instead of loving on them, instead of having grace, saying, listen, you did mess up. 
but you know what? We're going to lift you up in prayer. We're not going to keep stabbing you while you're down. We're going to lift you up. We're going to hold hand in hand and say, what you did was bad. We've all made mistakes, but we're going to pray for you to go higher in the Lord, not lower. And we, we don't want them to fall away because that's so hypocritical. That is such a hypocritical thing to do when you see someone down to keep attacking them. Now we lift them up. Amen. There's even, you know, sometimes people make fun of, you know, Joel Olstein and this one and that one. I am very careful, right? Coming against anybody preaching the gospel. Absolutely. Even if, even if they're pre preaching to babes, even if they're like, they're giving like, when we talk about milk, I mean, water down, water down milk. Of course, I would love them to edify and help mature the church. But the but there's also different stages. Like my sister got saved watching Joel Osteen. Now she's on another minister and she's going deeper. Um, you know, she's kind of falling away, but she's, you know, she's getting there, right? She started with Joel Osteen. Whether, you know, he preaches all the way about, you know, the Lord and like, you know, it's not just mercy, grace. Well, there's also a seat of judgment. There's also reverence for God that we have, but I'm never going to say anything bad about him ever. And there's so many, even of my friends, I'm like, why are you slandering him? Why are you coming against him? Do you, do you know these things are true? I mean, be really careful coming against what the Lord is doing because a house built by man, it will fall. But a house built by God, you may be fighting against God. I would be really, really careful. Have reverence for the Lord. And again, I, it's attacking one another. I, I want to definitely respond to that, Anna, because here's the truth that any person, okay, in ministry, whether you're a leader in, in, in a ministry or you're, you know, involved in ministry, but any person that stands up to speak against somebody to criticize and judge them and not to pray for them and say, Lord, we bless them. Lord, I thank you that you are going to step into that situation and begin to rescue them from any deception, whatever it is they're walking through, wherever they're weak, that you're going to come in and make them strong. Any minister that doesn't do that, do you know why they don't do it? Do you know why they criticize? Because they're projecting, they're projecting what is called self-protection mechanism, meaning they don't want to deal with their own stuff. And most people that criticize and judge to tear someone apart is because they're too prideful to see the areas that they need healing, that they need to make the right changes in their own life. They don't want to see it. They don't want to deal with it. So their focus is to project and put the spotlight on somebody else to hide themselves from the areas they need correction. Case in point, the Pharisees, right? They were stick napped. They were prideful. They found error in everybody else and didn't refuse, actually refuse to look at themselves, even when the Lord was standing in front of him. Let's go to this other verse because I love the scripture. Second Corinthians 12. I love that. You know, the, the, these are great scriptures Kelly sent to, to go over today and they're, they're awesome. These are my favorite. Verse 8. Actually, it's verse nine. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. I actually never read it like this where he says pleasure in infirmities. I was, remember I was saying I was rejoicing when they were persecuting me, lying about me and I couldn't understand why. Amen. We take pleasure in the persecutions in reproaches for Christ's sake. It's a joy. It's an honor. It's an honor to take any stab wounds in the spirit or in the flesh for the Lord. A absolutely, Anna. And you know, I, it's, it's so, it's so deeply moves my heart. You know, when you, you know, when someone really carries the heart of Jesus Christ, because the fruit is, is compassion the fruit is compassion. The fruit is mercy. Jesus said his blood flows from his mercy seat. And the fruit is, 
is patience. And, and I'm telling you what, that when you see that verse, it, it, it's, it's amazing how this is what the Lord said. He says, out of persecution, okay, whether somebody will persecute you for something in your past that is no longer a part of your present, and everybody needs to hear that. I felt the Lord fill my mouth with those words. Good. Whether there are those that persecute you from mm -hmm. your past that is no longer in your present. Mm -hmm. Woo. Woo. That the Lord says, out of that persecution, okay, he will literally produce a harvest that brings forth his kingdom. Meaning this, that any persecution we go through, this is why disciples back in the day said rejoice. Because what is birthed out of persecution mm -hmm. is revival. What is birthed out of persecution is where the Lord changes history. What is birthed out of persecution is a reformation or reformation in the church. What is birthed out of persecution is literally a deliverance that comes through the heart and the hand of God to deliver a people be, be, because he's marked and chosen a vessel to endure a persecution. And Jesus Christ is the very one who modeled that persecution because he said, I have to walk through this to produce a harvest. And this is where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty and there is freedom. So when I shed my blood, when I become the ultimate sacrifice, when they spit on me and they speak against me, when I'm the very one that is going to save them, when they spit on me and persecute me and laugh at me and mock me and want to literally assassinate me and crucify me, oh, out of that persecution is a harvest of souls throughout the nations. Mm. So everybody that's here, this is what Warrior Wednesday is all about, that I want to speak to the area where you are going through persecution, which is really, it's the fruit of long suffering, where you are falsely accused, where you are judged, where people come at you because really it is Satan himself. It is Satan himself. When he sees that God has anointed you and appointed you to literally bring forth the kingdom, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, okay? And really it means in earth, as it already is in heaven. Some translations is talking about you, what God wants to harvest out of your life, which is his kingdom. So see, what happens is out of that persecution comes a harvest. And when Satan sees that you are marked by God, that you have a calling to bring forth his kingdom, then he's going to say now we need to persecute. But the funny thing is that I said this last night. He has amnesia. He always seems to forget that when he brings persecution, God comes through the fire of the Holy Spirit to bring promotion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look, mm -hmm. Satan always seems to forget how God responds to any persecution that comes upon his beloved. Because out of that persecution, whatever level of persecution it is, revival is birthed out of it. And whatever persecution you walk through in his name for righteousness sake, he said, blessed are the persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what happens is, there is such a fruitful harvest that comes out of what you must endure to advance his kingdom. Because a wise person once said, you can only make olive oil only when you press the olives. 
right? When you're in a crucible moment, whether it be a test or a trial or even persecution, yeah, there's fruit that come out of it when you come through it humbly. Because listen, I so wanted to go on, on the website, on YouTube and on, on, on Twitter and attack the people that attacked me when I just got saved and say, you're a liar. I hate you. And then, you're an idiot. You know, I could have, I could have done that, but I, I, I just let, I actually, I didn't have the strength to, because I was so broken. I I'm glad I was to the point where I didn't even defend myself. I let the Lord defend me. And you know, it's just, he, he does the revenge, right? I pray for them. It was hard to do. My friends, I pray for them, but I pray for them. It's not easy to do, but there's such fruit out of that case in point. Kelly and I were in Pastor Ramiro Pena's church uh, in Waco, Texas this past Sunday. And Pastor Arthur Pulowski, who's been so persecuted in Canada, he's been so persecuted in Canada for spreading the gospel. He got arrested for baptizing his daughter in Canada. He got baptized for keeping his church open in Canada. He got arrested. I didn't say baptized. I meant to say arrested. He was also arrested because you're not allowed to feed the homeless in Canada. It is against the law to feed the homeless, to baptize, to give anything out for free. Th this demonic spirit, and he's persecuted. He's facing jail. He's been touring around the country. He's about to go back, which we're going to pray for him right now, actually. I'm, I'm about to see him again tomorrow in Colorado Springs. After that, he's going home to Canada, and he's facing the judge again face to face. You know what? And I'm he's glad. so glad. He's such, I just want to say one thing. He has such an incredible testimony. I'm actually sharing it on, on the comments right now. You guys need to watch his testimony. It's a prophetic warning for the church because this is what's coming. Okay. It's right in our back door. It's in China. I mean, it's everywhere, right? In the Middle East. Um, his testimony is incredible. He's also going to talk about three visions that he had of Jesus and the father while he was being crucified. It is powerful. Please share this link. It's on Pastor Ramiro Pena's uh, YouTube channel. It's on his YouTube channel. I'm going to show it to you while, while Cal talks, but I put the link in the description box. Oh, absolutely. See, and I'm glad that you mentioned it because even for those of you that are in office ministry, the Lord was already preparing my heart to share his story, his testimony, and to let you know that we in Abba's ministry are going to sow into that kingdom soil and be a part of, of releasing that kingdom seed uh, in, in this situation. He has been he has been fined so much. It is absolutely ridiculous the way they have burned it out. It is absolutely ridiculous the way they have persecuted him. And so let me tell you something. He is a roaring lion and the Lord had me prophesy. I was so humbled to just speak over him and say, listen, man, you, he is a battle ax that stands up to slay the passivity in the church. All those who are being so passive sitting on their rear instead of rising up as a rear guard. Oh, Jesus. That's what the Lord just said out of my mouth. As we said, they sit on their rear instead of rising up as a rear guard, standing up, standing up and roaring against this type of injustice. They want to protect their own ministries. And what God said, Anna, he had me prophesy this even before I went to Texas. He said, you tell these shepherds and these pastors, I am warning them for the very thing that you fear the enemy is going to take from you. I, the Lord, will take from you if you don't release my message and you don't inform and tell my people the truth concerning what is happening throughout the nations with their evil agenda in that, listen, concerning the medical field, concerning the governmental, everything we know that's going on. God said, if you don't open your mouth and speak the truth, I'm going to take the thing you thought you were afraid the enemy was going to take from you without it, you know, because you don't want to stand up. You don't want to stand up against the agenda of the enemy. You want to sit down on your rear and just be cozy in your little church instead of standing up and trusting me and roaring and declaring the great I am that I am and how I will rise up and defend my people. 
Mm. It's a sobering message for sure. And it's amazing to see the lions that have arose and stood faithful to the gospel because the gospel says, the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering. We're not to forsake the gathering of the bride of the church. Yes. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown was arrested. There's other pastors in California that were arrested for standing up for the truth. They knew they were going to be persecuted, but they knew the word of God. And just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not bow to demonic laws and rules and mandates set by a government or any state governor because they know what their Lord has told them. And these are lions. These are generals in the spirit. These are leaders. These are real shepherds. That's the difference between the wheat and the tares. Those that bow to the Lord and those who stand upright and prideful thinking that they're godly, but they're, but they're, they only have an appearance of godliness. They deny the power thereof. They deny the power of their God to set them free from prison. Listen, if, if, if I'm telling you, if, if I was a pastor, and I had a church, I would not close my doors either. No, I would no. I would have no problem going to prison and sitting there reading the Bible all day. I have no problem. I will I will start a prison ministry if that's the case. Sign me up. That sounds like fun. You know, hallelujah. You know, listen, Paul was released from prison. Peter supernaturally was released from prison. But we have shepherds that are afraid to keep their doors open because they're afraid of a little persecution from their community. What's up with that? Was Jesus afraid of persecution? No, he gave his life up willingly to go to the cross for you and me. Not to be cowards, but to be lions. Anna, Anna, I'm, I'm fixing a roar right here because you know when we were in Waco and there was someone prophesying about, you know, they were hearing prophetically about Dorothy, right, from the Wizard of Oz. And this is, I want to say something from what you said because in the Wizard of Oz, there was a cowardly lion. That lion was running. Ooh. And that lion didn't realize that it was created to roar. Mm. And so see, what we're doing is we are going. God is leading us to these lions that mm. the enemy has caused them to cower. Mm. To cower. And let's listen. And what I hear the Lord saying right now is, see, when you cower... You lose my dunamis power. Oh, when God, he just said that, Anna. When you cower, you lose my dunamis power. You, if you don't give me an opportunity to show off like Joshua and Caleb who spied the land and they said there's giants in the land and everybody ran and Joshua rose up and said, now God, this gives you the opportunity to show off. But see, unless you go through adversity, unless there's a storm, how are we going to see the great I am perform his wonders? How are we as a body, as leaders, going to see God begin to restore a hunger for the presence of God for the nature of God, if we're going to just, oh, everything's just cozy. No, it's not. We have to experience storms because that's when God begins to storm in and reveal the great I am that he is and his nature and how he deals and responds to the enemy from ages and generations. He's the same enemy. Do I had to say that, Anna? If you don't rise up to speak and hold these leaders accountable, then they will be stripped of the dunamis power because they cower and they cannot, they cannot disciple and raise up warriors. They're going to have warriors in their church. <laughs> and then they cower to the mark of the beast. And then they realized I should have stood tall before. Because if you don't, I forgot who said, I think it was George Washington. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall to anything. And we stand for the truth of God. We stand for the gospel. We are not shaken and we are not moved. The Lord said he was going to shake everything around you, including your friends from your life, your family that's persecuting you, calling you an idiot, mocking you, throwing all types of accusations at you. But you know what? That's supposed to make your faith stronger. 
and and it's it 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 gets shaken a little bit because I went through it. But then I but then I really I dug into the word and the Lord I realized was with me through everything. He never left me. He never forsakes me. He's always with me. And it grew my faith and it grew my dependency on God and not on men. Sometimes he allows a shaking. He does. And we are to go through persecution. Jesus promised us that. It's not to hurt us. It's to glorify him, like Kelly was saying. I love that you said that. By the way, for those that are just with us on Twitter that, that maybe don't know the Lord, what, what is dunamis power? What does that mean? Dunamis power is it represents the resurrection power of Christ. So dunamis represents the, the, the actual spirit of the living God that the Ruach or the breath of God that raised Jesus from the dead. And so dunamis means that every place the enemy comes to steal, kill, or destroy, it is the dunamis of God that resurrects, that revives, that restores, and brings reformation to, to glorify the Lord. So dunamis, I believe, and somebody can even quote the Greek or Hebraic meaning, but I believe that is, there's, there's more to it. Matter of fact, hold on, Anna, the Lord, it's actually in this book, there's a, there's a powerful uh, definition. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can pull it up real quick. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's see. Hallelujah. I think it's on. So if you want to say anything while I look this up. Yes. I'll, okay. I just love the verse. I'm going to pull it up again. Second Corinthians chapter. I'm going to mute you for a second. There's a bit of a um, echo. Second Corinthians chapter 12. While, while Kelly's looking for that. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Papa's strength, our father's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Therefore, therefore, we boast when we're weak, when we're attacked, when we're persecuted, because his strength is made perfect because it's not us. It's the Lord within us who gets to exude strength, love, and mercy. And then I also want to say there, I think it's, I'm trying to remember what it's in James. What chapter is it, JP? Can you pull it up? I think it's, um, gosh, what chapter is it? Chapter, not four, seven. Um, I'm trying to remember this verse as well. It's such a great verse. Oh, it says, when you are persecuted, to, um, gosh, what's the verse? I, I'm sorry, guys. When, you. when you're persecuted and you stand in truth, what happens is when you basically keep your mouth shut and you stand confident, the enemy realizes, people around you realize, wait a second, this person has the truth and I'm, I'm basically damned because this person holds the truth. Because when you're confident, I'm trying to find the verse. I know it's kind of like a mishmash, but uh, we're live here. I love this verse. Well, oh, it's Philippians. I think it's first Philippians, Philippians chapter one. Let me look this up. 113, Philippians 113 or 413. It's one of the two. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, here we go, Cal. Go ahead. You want to unmute your mic? Yeah, sure. Okay. I found it. And then, see, I love it. See how I need to find this and then you've got to find one. <laughs> I'll find it. One second. Okay. So I do recommend this, guys. I, I've shared this with several people about uh, the Overcomer's Handbook called Kingdom Proclamations by Barbara L. Potts. Uh, this is great tools. This is great spiritual tools in your tool belt. So the answer to the question and I don't know who it was that asked what is dunamis power. So again, it, it's praying the power of the resurrection. Okay. And dunamis means the force of creative miracles. This power removes obstacles and rearranges matter so that things not possible become realities. It releases souls from bondages and releases the abilities of the Holy Spirit. Kelly, what page is that they're asking? 
Oh, it is page 135 for those of you that actually got the book. Yes. <laughs> and it and it's really powerful because the scripture that it goes by, Anna, is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 through 22. Paul prayed that the Ephesians would know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. And the word power is dunamis toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And there's other names, but dunamis is pretty much the power of God that literally causes creative miracles. So the Lord says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So dunamis is all about releasing the resurrection of Christ in a situation where there's death, dry bones, no life. We decree the dunamis of God. Amen. Amen. So that's the dunamis power of God. I love that verse that the Holy Spirit told you, that word, that manna from heaven, the Lord just said about you're going to cower, you're going to lose dunamis power. Oh, my mind. Are you, are you, do you have another scripture that you're going to read? trying to find it okay yeah i will find it because i i believe you know what we're gonna do another i think it'll be like a part two with the persecution but mm -hmm. there is so much that needs to be said because if we were not listen a true leader in christ is gonna focus on giving you a foundation and understanding the fruit of the Holy Spirit, not saying, oh, God's giving you this breakthrough and, and you're going to have this, all this stuff. Let me tell you something. You need to be very careful because this is why God told Anna and I to do this, to say, we need to give you everything that's going to give you strong roots in Christ. And you need to understand persecution and what happens through it that is so glorious. Long suffering produces the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to do a part two next week on Warrior Wednesday. You guys, it was a blessing for this live. We're glad that you joined us. I know, Kel, we wanted to go through Mount of Cristo video. Maybe we'll do it next time. Oh, yeah. Yes. Anna. So I just found out that Anna. She loves, so one of our favorite movies is The Count of Monte Cristo. And so two years ago, the Lord had me go through the entire movie. And it, it was so many people were getting healed. So many people were getting uh, liberated. I mean, it was unbelievable how the revelation through that movie was truly liberating and healing so many through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Lord wanted us to show you a scene. So we'll do that next week. But it is a scene from the movie, The Count of Monte Cristo, which Monte Cristo means the Mount of Christ. Hello. And that. it really, this movie portrays what, how God carries out his justice from unbelievable unjust persecution. You know what? I'm actually going to play that clip now. Do you want to do it? And, and we'll close out. You guys can watch it. But next week, we'll talk about this clip. Amen. So we'll let you watch this short clip, and we will see you guys next time. Amen? Amen. Bye, guys. Bless you. Bye, warriors.
Welcome, Monsieur Dantes. I am Armand Doliac, the warden of Chateau Deef. <clears throat> Monsieur, I know you must hear this a great deal. But I assure you, I am innocent. <laughs> Everyone must say that, I know, but I truly am. Innocent? Yes. I know. I really do know. You mock me? No, my dear Dantes. I know perfectly well that you are innocent. Why else would you be here? If you were truly guilty, there are a hundred prisons in France where they would lock you away. But Chateau d'If is where they put the ones they're ashamed of. Let's have a look at your quarters now, shall we? 